guys, it's Reagan, and today I'm here to do a video that I did in the past, but it's been like over two years, and I really enjoyed doing it the first time, so I thought, let's give it a reprise. And that is going to be the on my shelf video. Essentially, I asked for just a series of random numbers that are going to correspond with a shelf and a book number on my bookshelf. I'm going to pull that book out, and then we're going to chat about it. If you didn't know, I have this bookshelf here. Hello. And also, I have a bookshelf over there. Here's the other bookshelf. I'm only showing you the top half because, oh my god, that's so messy. Please don't judge me. So, without further ado, let's just go ahead and pick books and chat. So the first number is 4 and 12. So shelf 4 and 12 book. Book on my shelf is The Queen of the Night by Alexander Chi. This is a book I've been meaning to read for forever, but its size and heftiness has really put me off because it's a little intimidating. This is an adult literary fic historical fiction novel that is about an opera singer who's getting blackmailed. I don't much I don't know much more than that, but this just sounds so intriguing and so good, but it's also super long. I should probably read this soon. I like this particular type of video because it kind of forces me to confront all the random books I've been putting off in my life, potentially. And this is one of them. I really should read this. I really like the sound of this book. And also, it's beautiful. Look at the spine. Next is 8 and 5. It's over there. I'll be right back. That book corresponding on my bookshelf is The Sorcerer Heir by Sidney Williams Chima. Yet another book I haven't read. And this is probably one of my most embarrassing because it's the only Sidney Williams Chima book that I have not read. This is the continuation novel to the Air series, which was her original um, trilogy that was set in her now very famous world. This is just, you know, a continuation of that. I haven't read this. Um, it's a real bummer. The Air series follows a multitude of different characters. It's set in a modern day world, and in this world people have different types of magic. This is kind of the after series of the Seven Realms series. I believe they're set in the same world and they have a lot of similar magic. However, I will say, because I get this question all the time, you don't need to read this before you read the Seven Realms series and vice versa. They are independent of each other and the characters, there's no spoilers essentially if you read one before the other. However, you do need to read Flamecaster after the Seven Realms series because there is huge spoilers in like the first chapter. But anyway, this is another book I really, really need to read. And honestly, I probably should reread the whole Air series, which is a four book thing, before I even try to read this because I honestly don't remember much from any of the books because I read them in middle school. But anyway, next up is 7 and 15. On my shelf is Finnegan of the Rock by Melina Marchetta. I'm happy. One, I've read this. Two, this is one of my favorite books ever. This is a part of one of the greatest YA fantasy series of all time in my opinion. This is just such a good book. This is the first book to the Lumetri Chronicles. It is kind of a prequel book to the next two novels. It is a trilogy that follows different characters or different main characters in each book. However, all the characters still are in each book. Elena Marchetta has such a way with words and writing. The themes in this feel so real to our world. However, they have an element of the fantastical. The characters in this are insane. You will laugh, you'll cry. It's amazing. It's very political. It's very, very good though. I'm obsessed with this series. I love it so much. Next up, let's do two and four. That is another classic, I feel like, and it's Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. This is a book that like circulated, made the rounds in booktube a few years ago. One of the first book recommendations I ever got from booktube absolutely loved it. For one, the author is an Austin, Texas native, so shout out to Austin, Texas, and this is coming out as a movie this year, directed by Steven Spielberg, so you have time to read the book before the movie. This is an amazing, nerdy, 80s inspired science fiction adventure story. It's set in a futuristic world where basically the environment has gone kaput, and everyone kind of escapes the dreary reality of that into an intense, real life feeling virtual reality. Kind of this virtual reality at the beginning of the story died, and he basically left the key to this world, whomever can solve the riddles and the puzzles, people are after it, because this is a billion, billion, billion dollar enterprise. It's so good! This is literally probably one of the most fun books I have read. All of the nerd culture references are great, but even if you're not really familiar with video game culture, you'd still really enjoy this because it's just so well thought out and so much fun and I can't wait to see it as a movie because visually I think this is going to be amazing. But I'm so happy I pulled this. I haven't like held Ready Player One in like years. This was yay. Let's do shelf 13 book 24. That book is a middle grade that I actually have never read and I love middle grade and I think this is really making me want to pick it up. 
Anyway, it is Septimus Heap, book one, Magic. And I actually don't know very much about this series, aside from the fact it has a billion books and everyone tells me to read it, especially if I like Brandon Mole and, you know, Rick Riordan, which I do because I love middle grade fantasy. Uh, I just feel like this is really good. I know it has to do with magic and a chosen one child, and it just sounds like a lot of fun. It has, like, illustrations in it, which, again, I'm just a sucker for. I really need to read this book. Like, this is something I might read next. So I'm currently reading a middle grade book and I'm really loving it, so I might as well just read more middle grade, right? That's the kind of philosophy I follow. Let's do shelf 15 and book 34. That book is actually a recent acquisition that I've already read, and that is Poison Study by Marie B. Snyder. This is a book I recently picked up because I want to reread this series. Well, reread the first book so I can read the rest of the series. This is the first book to the Touch of Power or the Study series. She is like a million fantasy books that all sound really awesome, but they're all connected, I think, in the same world. So I want to start at the beginning, which is this, before I venture off anywhere else. This is a story that follows a girl who's arrested and is about to be executed. However, she's given a second chance at life if she decides to be the king's food tester, basically just testing food for poison. And they normally don't last long because people try to poison the king all the time. But yeah, I want to reread this soon as well because I really want to continue on and read more of Maria, Maria V. Snyder's work because I really, that's just, it's a goal of mine. I really want to read them. So, yay. And we'll do one last book. The book I'm going to say is uh, Shelf 5, book 12. Well, this book is actually really special. It's actually the book that my boyfriend Clay got me on our first Valentine's Day. When we first started dating, he'd buy me books and write really sweet notes in them because he knew how much I love to read. Sorry, I just reread the little note design and it's like so sweet. It's like the past few months. I'm like, oh my god, that's so long ago. Anyway, the book is Cloud Atlas and this is one of Clay's favorite books and movies of all time. Um, I also really, really love the movie and I really enjoyed this book a lot. This was my first David Mitchell and I read it purely because Clay loved it so much and I'm happy I did. I'm happy I got to sit and talk to him about it. This is a book I'm never going to get rid of and honestly holds so much sent sentimental value for me. Like when I look at Cloud Atlas, I rarely think of the actual story. I really think of just Clay just because it's so uh, attached. But this is like a very good book on the other hand. I mean, this like was a finalist for the Man Booker. This is one of, you know, it was an Academy award nominated movie it's all about like interconnected lives and fates throughout time it's very very good but you know it's nothing will top the sweet note that clay wrote me at the beginning of this it's so nice anyway i'm so happy this was the last book so, what a sweet note for that to end on alrighty guys that is the on my shelf video i hope you enjoyed i really love making this it kind of makes me revisit books randomly on my shelf and kind of reflect or figure out goals for them. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you soon with another one soon. Goodbye!